Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. And now, here's our host, Dr. Vanessa Ancelone. Welcome, dear listener, to Kardec Radio. Today, the show is about Brazil's soulful medicine. Yes, Brazil has a different perspective on treating the body and the mind connection. Why? We want to know why. What is the difference? Even Oprah has been bringing lots of news about the Brazilian way of approaching uh, health in general. And we know the spirit is the science is the main thing that is changing, revolutionizing medical approach, psychological, psychiatric approach in Brazil. So we are here with uh, Sandra Nunes. She is in California, and she's going to be here talking to us about the most beautiful book she wrote, Brazil's Soulful Medicine. She has a very kind approach. She's very calming also the way she relays the ideas she discovered about uh, Brazil's approach to medicine, etc. You're going to love it. There's so much to share. As the book says, it's the story of a nation that leads the world in establishing important scientific principles of communication between the spiritual and physical worlds, where therapeutic techniques are applied with the invocation of divine intervention. Can you believe it? Yes, it is true. And there is so much to know. It's a problem of getting to know more about what's happening here. And we would like to share with you that Kardec Radio is also being mainstreamed at Bzera Online Web Radio at Spiritist.com. And you are going to be able to listen to it on demand our Kardec radio shows, and much more, also in Portuguese and in Spanish. There are beautiful programs there, directed by our dear friend Luis Salazar from Miami, Florida. And we would like to share with you that Kardec radio is here also sharing the news that the Brazilian spiritual healing group, led by Tanya Stewart and Greg Stewart, are providing a beautiful program to get to know more about mediumship a week from today in Sacramento, California. If you want to know more about it, just go to Facebook and type in Brazilian Spiritual Healing Group and there you'll find more news about the fantastic work they are doing to promote greater health and greater spirituality in our lives. Dear listener, this week we had a major, a major problem happening in Brazil, not only Brazil, but also uh, in the Middle East area, people are experiencing lots of challenges and problems. In Brazil alone, in the city of Santa Maria, more than 230 young adults lost their lives, of course, in the physical body. They discarnated collectively after major fire in a disco. Well, Many people have been shocked by it. Of course, we should be one with everyone in the families who stayed here. And spiritism brings a beautiful message of hope. A message to tell us that we shall never, in spite of the pain, the sorrow, and the anguish, we should hope that our loved ones keep on living. Life really goes on. And the temporary passing of the physical body is really minute compared to the blessings in which they are received in the afterlife. We are saying this because later in the program today, through the segments of Kardec Radio, we're going to stream to you a message of consolation by the spirit Emmanuel. Emmanuel, through the hands of Chico Xavier, explains the ins and outs of the behind the scenes of collective discarnations. Followed by the segment of Dr. Marco Magalhães and Joyce Magalhães, who will tell us more about the Spiritist take on collective discarnations. Because we are living at a very time in which 
this is happening almost in a daily basis somewhere in the world. And we need to know more. What to make up with this? What to do? What to think? What to share when people come to us in great distress? And what if it happens to us? Why is this happening? There is much to console our hearts and our minds in regard to that. And we are here to share that message with you. For today, we are going to keep ourselves into a new understanding of healing. When we talk about Brazil soulful medicine, as our dear Santa Union is going to explain to us, we're talking about a deep healing, actually a new method of healing, one in which Calvin Van Dyne, I speak, who communicated through Chico Xavier when he was passing by Washington, D.C. in 1965, he left for us a message, a message to be meditated upon and to bring us new perspective about healing. Is that what you're looking for? Probably the majority of people on earth is not all they are looking for, new ways of healing. And this is the new healing that we propose to all of us. The new method of healing by Kelvin Van Dyne through Chico Xavier. of healing. Calvin Van Dyne. There is a problem in the maintenance of balance and peace that demands reflection. It is the problem of improvement. In order for that to happen on the physical plane, we are perfecting medicine on earth since the Egyptians. The history of the science of healing is one of the most beautiful chapters in human history. Sacrifices, abnegations, heroisms, experiences. All have been done in order to heal infirmities and extinct handicapped, diminish trials and extinguish organic calamities. Pharmaceutical labs, hospitals and retreats have been called to the struggle and any loved one fall ill they receive our care and resources in order to recover as soon as possible. This is in regard to the body. But what about concerns of the spirit? The individual who gets sick of the viscera also falls sick in his or her mental mechanisms. There are vices of conduct much as degenerations of the liver. If we provide remedy to the hepatic occurrences, why do we slap the mind of the individual in spiritual perturbation? If we have anesthesia to extract the cancerous formation, why don't we use forgetfulness to extinguish the obsessive process that aggravated itself due to pride and vanity, envy or rebelliousness that one was filled with? Why not treating the one who offends as a sick person who is more in need of care than censure? If a friend appears spiritually deformed, be in the face of bitterness or uncharitableness, let us help him or her to get rebalanced. Let us immediately start with providence applied to the infirmed ones. Let us make them feel better. No one gives liquid fire to the bearers of a gastric ulcer. We never readjust someone's heart with the flames of criticism. Let us clarify the difficult situations, correct mistakes, and establish the truth but let us not exceed the limits of human goodness and the responsibility to live as a surgeon restores the lacerated organ without destroying it at knife strokes. Mistakes do exist, but let us experience a new method to heal mistakes. Let us make the one who makes mistakes feel better. Washington, D.C., June 8, 1965.
Dear listener, this is precisely what we're proposing with the program today. When we are talking about the healing today, it's all about the deep healing, the, the healing of the soul. In the spiritist perspective, the body sooner or later, no matter how much we take care of it, it's going to perish. Death is an inevitable occurrence in our lives, but the healing of the soul is for immortality. And that's what we're looking for when we're talking about this new approach that is being brought to us. And to kickstart the show in the most beautiful tone, we here have a, a chapter from the book Happy Life by Joana de Angelis through the medium of uh, Divaldo Franco. Let us listen to this and after the first break, we're going to have here with us a very beautiful segment uh, very beautiful segments in general. And most importantly, this one, we're going to discuss about the book by Santa Union's Brazil's Soulful Medicine. <laughs> While there is life, the opportunities to grow and to be happy multiply. Each day is a new blessing from God, a proof of His love to you. As the hours pass, cultivate optimism and well-being. We will return to our program after these messages. A new masterpiece has just been released by Odyssey of America, Memoirs of a Suicide by Yvonne Pereira. Under the guidance of the spirit Leon Dennis, the spirit author Camilo Castello Branco, using the pen name Camilo Candido Botelho, describes to the medium Yvonne A. Pereira his dreadful experience after discarnated by suicide. The book entails invaluable instruction, demonstrating the greatness of the divine mercy toward repentant suicides, and providing them with the opportunity to understand the universe and life in its fullest dimension. The beginnings of planet Earth, the evolution of the human being, the immortality of the soul. Christ's conscious morality and other relevant themes are presented for the understanding that no attempt at moral growth will work if we remain imprisoned in self-ignorance. A completing of this work shows that there is a road of reconstruction for those who repent. There is always hope because rehabilitation is possible. Buy your copy today at www.edusayofamerica.com. Kardec Radio, live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. The International Spiritist Council is organizing and promoting the 7th World Spiritist Congress, which will be held in Havana, Cuba on March 23rd through the 25th of 2013. The Congress theme will be charity and spiritual education in building a world of peace. 150 years of the gospel according to spiritism. For more information, please visit www.7cem.org. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are here to talk about Brazil's soulful medicine. There is so much to know and to get to know. And we have here with us the honor of having Sandra Unis. She is a freelance writer and she has been traveling to distant lands such as Brazil. She grew up in California and she has studied also at the University of California, Los Angeles, with majors in anthropology, social science, and Latin American studies. She has written some books, amongst them, 
Brazil Soulful Medicine, which is a book that talks about the story of a nation that leads the world in establishing important scientific principles of communication between the spiritual and physical worlds, where therapeutic techniques are applied with invocation of divine intervention. It's amazing. So much to get to know. And here we have our dear guest, Sandra Nunez. Hi, Sandra. Thank you so much for being a cardiac radio today. Hi, Vanessa. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to be here today. It's great to have you here, Sandra, and especially sharing the news about the the beautiful work you did compiling in this book that really brings to the world an idea about what's happening out there that probably can help revolutionize revolutionize medicine. But how did you get interested in the spirituality of Brazil, and why do you call what you've observed as a Brazil soulful medicine? Uh, I was uh, I received a healing from my first visit to Brazil, mm. and the healing the healing involved uh, healing my lifelong epilepsy. And uh, from the first uh, visit to Brazil, I I, I was immediately uh, just captivated by by the amount of, of faith I saw in Brazilians and and uh the spiritual surgeries that were going on with John of God and and all I was perplexed with all of that that was going on and mm-hmm. so anyhow that that motivated me to go back at that time I was doing my studies in uh anthropology with a focus on medical anthropology so it it kind of went hand in hand with what I was doing and uh I went back to Brazil about uh, nine, ten times after that, and the mm. result of it was the book, Brazil Social Medicine. Wow, that's amazing. And so you really found not only relief for yourself, but you found a new way of approaching health and yes, health care. Yes, and, and I, had to, I had to, I felt like I was an instrument to be able to channel this information uh, to kind of serve as a bridge between Brazil and the United States and even possibly the rest of the world and helping them understand how how uh, this unique uh, shift that Brazil has, has been able to make, this uh, incorporation of holistic medicine, spiritual medicine into their into their mainstream medicine was, was what I found most amazing. Yeah, that's so right. And amongst the besides the the chapters you talk about John of God, etc. When you talk about the spirit doctors, or you call mm-hmm. them soul doctors and soul clinics, uh, mm-hmm. the healing mediums. You also mm-hmm. mention about uh, Doctor Fritz. Uh, Doctor Fritz, not very um, known to people nowadays because it's before John of God's approach. So right. can you tell us more into the listener these other discoveries you made around the the healing mediumship that exists in Brazil? Ah uh, yes, there is there is the Dr. Fritz um is the is the initial is, is what started all this healing mediumship in Brazil. Uh this relationship between a spirit doctor and a healing medium who the first healing medium was Arigo. And um the, the the book Brazil Soulful Medicine that is that is my first publication on the subject. Mm-hmm. However, um, just this month uh, in Brazil, uh, a new version of this uh, first English work uh, has been released, and it's La uh, mm-hmm. Patria dos Curadores uh, is the title of the book. And uh, in that book, I I have uh, gone back to Brazil to to research uh, more of the Dr. Fritz phenomena and what that all meant to Brazilians and to the whole healing evolution of uh, spirit medicine for the world. So um, it's a very it's a very key uh, key information to to uh, to use in the in the evolution of medicine at this point. I um, I'm sorry, I'm kind of getting a little a little nervous here. No, um, no, that's okay. But you know, I want to make a comment as you're talking about Doctor Fritz because, yes. uh, as a spiritist ourselves, you know, he came through several different mediums. Amongst them, one of the most famous was also uh, Edson Queiroz, 
Right. And Edson Queiroz, uh, I personally met him when I was 10 or 11 because he used to go around uh, several different cities in the state of Sao Paulo and elsewhere giving the, the, the healings and consultations. And I remember my family, and especially my grandmother, who was the president of a spiritist center there, she helped organize a lot of these things because people don't understand that in Brazil, you don't have access to medical care as much That's as you right. have in the United States. And many That's people right. are really, really poor, and they have pretty much no choice but to go see these healing mediums. So you're talking right. about thousands of people lining up. And I remember right. by helping, you know, my grandmother, we were there, the whole family. And then she said, you know, Vanessa, you have bronchitis. So today I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Fritz to 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 give you some form of treatment or etc. So I remember laying down on the massage bed and amongst like several there were thousands of people there, and he had mm -hmm. that German accent, and he mm -hmm. turned to me and said, at that time I was 11 years old, he said, she has nothing. She just needs to give passes. I was 11. Of course, I was a spiritist, so I understood <laughs> the concept. But he yeah. said, go there to the passes room and just tell her to give the passes. I mean, yeah. if you are not a spiritist, you wouldn't understand the concept. But then, thank God we did, and we got to know it was just excessive energy that was he needed to be channeled out right, right. instead of being contained. So right. this is pretty much some of the miracles that really happened there. And we say miracle not in the true sense of the word because we know it doesn't exist per se. God doesn't bend his own laws, but in the sense of amazing events that yeah. can happen, like for you, exactly. right? Right, exactly, exactly. I... I um I, I'm, I'm still perplexed with the the amount of information that I found, and and you know, with with uh, when I was initially doing my my research studies, I, I came to find uh, some very interesting facts uh, with the World Health Organization, um, and these are also included in the book uh, with with the statistics of of comparing uh, neuropsychiatric deaths in Brazil to the US and they are quite they 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 are quite uh you know there's there's a significant difference there and so uh that was initially what uh kind of uh, again alerted me to you know that th there is something Brazilians are doing in in mental health that is obviously working much better than what we're doing here in the United States and that applied also to to um chronic deaths or, or their statistics, again, by the World Health Organization, that uh, the deaths of Brazilians was a lot, uh, uh, there was a great, a great significance there as well, um, just to kind of give you a, an idea of what those mm -hmm. numbers were. Uh, the U.S., uh, and this is in the year 2002, the U.S. had f over 558,000 deaths while Brazil had uh, 177,000 deaths. Uh, so it's almost like uh, a. I mean, that is that that is that is a considerable difference. And when we look at uh, the, you know, immediately the first thing that came to mind was, oh, it's got to be because maybe Brazil spends more money on their health care versus what we spent here. But that was not the case either uh, because the U.S. spends about three times more money than mm -hmm. Brazil. And so, so you know, I, I started looking at, okay, wh wh what is uh, what is Brazil doing that is, that is different from what we're doing here, and I came to the uh, to the conclusion that it is it is the the their work with spirit, it is their work with soul, it is their work with redirecting patients to a spirit life, to a supernatural faith that is that is helping patients reorganize themselves and reintegrate themselves, and that uh, that again is is, is 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 to me very sweet. <laughs> Yeah, it's very, very interesting. Very, very sweet. Mm -hmm. But as you, as we said before, when we're talking about, because the, the main reason we know that Brazil has become so successful in, in, in this spiritual medical approach is because of the spiritist movement, because right. it's, it's been all over the place. But still, the goal is to heal the soul. And there is actually one amazing chapter in your, in your book, it's uh, 
chapter 11 that talks about prevention-oriented care regimen. You talk about non-surgical treatment, something you also learned while observing and studying this approach in Brazil. Can you tell us more about what does it mean? Sure. Um, Prevention-oriented care regimen refers to um, a self-guided, a self-healing uh, mechanism that is centered in the in activating soul reformation. In other words, it is where patients are encouraged to study and to practice uh, soul reformation. And how do they practice it? Is by by uh, doing more charitable works, by uh, by learning to identify what uh what things they need to they need to change they need to put in order with with the order of the spirit world and so to me that is that is something that creates uh uh major major changes in a person's ethical understanding and in their moral conduct um these uh these uh moral conducts or these belief systems they are all connected they're all, all linked to our energetic system and to our vibration and it is this energetic system and this vibration that is uh you know that manifests itself in physical illness or or in health but and if you so know Sandra? adjusting or attuning it is it helps mm. helps uh helps bring the person back to harmony, back to back to where they're supposed to be. <laughs> That's interesting you, you mentioned this because we, we, it's quite a pattern in the, the spiritist way of approaching health that we should combine mind, spiritual body, and body approach, physical body approach. Right. But right. I remember talking to several colleagues here and friends in the, you know, people who are somewhat interested in this approach, bringing it to the United States. And they said, you know, this thing about inner transformation, when it's, uh, you know, I think that's not going to to work in the United States because people either they like the phenomena or it's not going to work. I said, well, that's, is that probably the reason why it's still not happening here? Or if it's happening, it's at a very slow pace because you think the main difference between countries like Brazil and their acceptance of this more holistic approach in which you have to change the mind to prevent form of dis uh, and other diseases in here is that the reason why you think we yes, are yes i think i think i think brazilians are a lot more receptive to to uh the spirit life and the spirit world and i think a lot of that has to do with how the history has evolved in Brazil. Uh, I'm talking about the, the spiritist healing movement, how it evolved uh, from a syncretism of, of beliefs uh, and incorporating, you know, uh, the native views of cosmology and the, and the, the uh, colonizing views, of the Catholic, Catholic views, the... Uh, the spiritist views that came from the from the um Kardec uh influence when the Kardec books were introduced to Brazil. So I think Brazilians are uh just much more open. They're much more receptive. And I think a a, a great deal that has occurred or uh, or why I think it's it, it's because it's also embedded in the institution because of the work of Chico Javier. Chico Javier was uh you know uh, for 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 a country to have uh to allow spirit testimony into their into their court of law. Yes. Uh to be able to reverse a uh a uh I'm sorry I went blank. Uh to be able to reverse a the a, sentencing a, of the a sentence criminal. right. It, it that that shows how embedded, how deeply people believe in the spirit world. That is not happening here. And it's not happening works. also because uh you know as as we we are talking about I think we can't defeat 
the the spiritual laws of life and the spiritual laws of life they tell and dictate that the order of events are such that everything starts in the mind whether right. the phenomena happen or not but if we don't change the the mindset right we we're gonna not gonna find healing so it's we you can't rule out the the whole approach into new into into the new healing of the self right. If you don't incorporate this changing of the mind right. of the individual helping, I remember, you know, Sandra, going last year to because there are so many mediums in Brazil and people think, oh, oh it's only yes. John of God and no, this there's and that. so many. Yeah. yeah, everywhere in Brazil, and there is yeah. one that I've come to know, or got to know, quite recently in the state of Minas Gerais, nearby the city of Belo Horizonte, the state of Chico Xavier. Her name okay. is Magda, and she receives this. Oh. There's also a German doctor named oh. Brother Gorik. And oh. it's fascinating because where when people sit down by the massage bed, after listening to a lecture, you uh -huh. know, after listening to a new approach on this healing, like healing of the soul, ethical moral principles, etc. They sit down, she talks to them, she does the, you know, she redirects the diagnosis of the physical body. And I'll never mm -hmm. forget, as we were watching the procedure, this lady, she was like in her 30s, laid down, and then mm -hmm. she started, you know, touching the lower abdomen of the mm -hmm. patient. And then she asked, actually, the entity through her asked Brother Gorik, so is this where it hurts? And then the lady said, yes, it is. Oh, I see you argue and fight a lot with your husband. That's why this is happening. And then I'll never forget the face of the lady. She laughed, kind of embarrassed, because the spirit went to the core of the matter, saying that what mm -hmm. is happening physically right. was a byproduct mm -hmm. of her emotional spiritual instability and said you right. know you're gonna use this cream you're gonna do this and the other but don't forget if you don't stop right. fighting with your husband right. you're not gonna find healing that's right that's right and not until we not until we change that attitude not until we change that not until we recognize spirit in our life are we going to be able to accept uh this 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 type of healing it's mm -hmm. it's uh it's uh it's it's it, 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 i i know it's it's a very difficult task to accomplish and that is why i've been i've been so so uh just amazed with the the level of work that in brazil their level of understanding you know they have they have uh ever since the spiritist books made their way to brazil uh, in the mid 1800s, uh, that that Brazil has been able to just you know compile this wealth of information about spirit life and spirit world, and they they have a very unique understanding of it. And so, as Chico Javier said in in one of his works, uh, you know, it is Brazil who is going to lead the world in 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 humanizing medicine and in Christianizing, evangelizing the world as well. And I, I firmly do believe that. That's amazing, Sandra. We have a lot to ask you, but we're going to give a short break. When we come back, we want to know more about some other perspectives you gave in this book about those non-surgical treatments as well, okay? Okay, thank you. We will return to our program after these messages. Kardec Radio, live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. In Life Goes On, in an inspiring novel by the spirit author Andrea Luis, this book is a spirit's description of the individual after discarnating, and it shows that the life of the inhabitants of the beyond are related to their mental state. In a novel with 26 chapters, it tells the story of real characters who, upon scarnating, receive the help of spirit friends. These friends encourage them to renew themselves through study and work in order to prepare them to review their lives and understand schemes of the past. 
thereby enabling them to follow new directives of behavior. This volume teaches us the practice of self-examination in a certainty that, in conformity with the laws of God, life continues full of hope and labor, progress and accomplishment after death. Buy your copy today at www.edseyofamerica.com. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Spiritism for Everyone, the online study of the Spirit's Book and the Gospel According to Spiritism. Spiritism for Everyone meets every Wednesday evening and Saturday morning using the latest technology in web conferencing. You can join in from any computer in the comfort of your home or office, no matter where you are in the U.S. or the world. Spiritism for Everyone is open, free, and requires no registration. To access the web live meetings, go to www.spiritus.us. Spiritism for Everyone is a program of the United States Spiritist Council. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are here talking about Brazil Soulful Medicine with the very author of the book, Sandra Nunez from California. She has been writing freelance and she also studied with majors in anthropology, social science, and Latin American studies from the University of California in Los Angeles. She has written books and chapters, and especially this book talks about the amazing approach that Brazil has in regards to health. We're not saying it's perfect. Of course, it's not. Brazil has a lot of difficulties. But we're talking about a a unique approach that has become quite mainstream in Brazil, one in which, as she says, a nation that leads the world in establishing important scientific principles of communication between the spiritual and physical worlds, where therapeutic techniques are applied with the invocation of the divine intervention. And quoting from her very book, amazing, when it says, page 127, society could gain inner peace in knowing physical life is impermanent, but spiritual life is eternal. There's a lot to know. So, Sandra, as we were talking about one, we talked about the surgical treatments with the spirit doctors through the mediums, the healing mediums. But you also has a you have a beautiful chapter that talks about the non surgical treatments, especially when it talks about charitable work, like service and uh, the idea of receiving the, the, the healing, the passes, the the spiritually magnetized water. Can you tell us more about uh, these type of approaches regarding non surgical treatments? Uh, yes, I think um, using these uh, instruments, uh, I think Brazilians have uh, come to understand that uh, there are complementary therapeutic interventions that we must all be involved in. And uh, these help the patient harmonize, uh, help them heal. And uh, I think really it's, it's the intention that is set behind each one of these practices that helps helps the patient harmonize and 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 move through that density to uh to a new space of uh, of health and of just releasing all those old old uh, toxic uh ways of uh hanging on to things that that we you know we as uh, as as humans we need to we need to release and we need to move on and so um, I, I, I just think it's amazing. I, I just think it's amazing that they've been able to, to figure, uh, figure all this out and incorporate this into a patient's treatment regimen and uh, consider these things important. Uh, because like uh, I think I mentioned earlier, you know, it's, it's, it's spirit and uh, the supernatural uh, has long ago been removed from the Book of Knowledge. And, and uh it is it is it is now uh the way we are making our way back to incorporating that important element into our biomedical practice exactly that's uh really fascinating as you said something that is coming to greater light as science 
steps up to understand the mechanisms of it. One thing we know, it works. It's yes. not just like food. You right. don't need to scientific proof to know that apple is good for you. If we <laughs> wait for scientific proof, we're not going to eat anything because we don't have proof of every yes. single element we put in our mouth, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so under the same token, we tell people it works. It doesn't hurt. You've okay. never heard anybody dying of eating apple unless they eat too much, of course, probably everything that is excessive. But in this case, we know of these amazing prevention tools as well because medicine, Sandra, as you know, in the in the healthcare research, people are talking about prevention as the ultimate tool for a better society. We right. we shouldn't await things right. to get worse for us to make it better, but to prevent them from getting worse. And it seems I like the, the the spiritual approach is really lining up with the future frontier in science as uh, well, correct? Uh, I see I see that happening, yes, yes. And I think it all it all also needs to uh initiate with us here, uh as well as outside of Brazil. Uh, having a new perspective on how we view health and illness. Uh, if we view health uh, as only a physical integration or disintegration, I mean, a, a, as a physical integration and illness as a physical disintegration and, and, and leave out of that the psychological, the social, the spiritual integration as well, we, we are doing a major disservice. And that's where I think uh, the fault line is here. Exactly. Anywhere outside of Brazil. Mhm. Mhm. So little by little, people are paying more attention to this. Now, we are living in a most interesting time, as you already mentioned previously, in which conventional medicine is at its peak of efficiency like never before. But at the same time, at the very same time, we are seeing the public searching for new approaches that consider the individual as a whole. It's the famous holistic approach. And I always mention this to my students, Sandra. I say, look, here it is. You are not the physical body alone. If, you, you're, if your patient comes in with a, a knee injury, and you only treat the knee, but you don't consider the whole individual, right. you're going to fail. You're just going to be a technician. So right. little by little, we're gravitating to a new paradigm. And you also finalize your book talking about this paradigm. Can you tell us more about the perspectives of this paradigm and actually what this paradigm really is? Okay. Um Looking at our healthcare model uh, here in the state, when we look at it and we see that that uh, you know we are currently still using, uh, or I'm talking our biomedical model of treatment, uh, diagnostic and treatment intervention, we are still using uh, our old Newtonian concepts in it. Uh, after we've, uh, you know, more than 50, 60 years ago, we evolved from the Newtonian concept to the, to the Einstein quantum concept. Um, we still stay behind in, in, our, in our approach to healing. And, um, you know, the history of medicine is really interesting to me, and that was one of, my, uh, one of the things I found most fascinating uh, when I was uh, doing my studies is that um, in the history of medicine, uh, we developed a healthcare model here in the United States that, that never made a corresponding fundamental change within its healthcare delivery principles. And so that, to me, was key, that that you know here we we evolve from from treating acute conditions which are short uh, and brief episodes of illness uh to to treating epidemics uh like the latter half of the 19th century with with the world wars and to treating trauma and infectious disease in the first half of the 20th century to treating chronic illness 
and never making any significant change at the fundamental level. And so that, to me, is uh, it's, it, it, it's a cry for help. This is where we really need to address the change that we need. Um, if we are going to treat chronic illness, we need to bring in the spiritual knowledge of disease. We need to we need to have the patient help himself reintegrate himself, and to to be able to to address. Uh, you know, chronic illness is a uh, it's a long term thing. It's not an acute thing. So we need to we need to educate our patients. We need to have them, uh, you know, take back that responsibility that that they need to have for their own health. You're so, so right. And as you're talking about this, Sandra, we just got an email from somebody asking, like, how can we educate um, practitioners here and healthcare providers to broaden their approach to the level that we already have, for example, in Brazil? Well, I think we need to create more bridges. We need to uh, create uh, the environment, uh, you know, to hold the space for this interaction. First of all, the United States needs to be more open to cultural sensitivity and cultural understanding to the, to the ideas that will help, uh, you know, improve our health care system here. That's yeah. where we need to start. Yeah, you talked about the very subject about cultural sensitivity and uh, adjustment as well. You're so right. So, Sandra, uh, we have here people at Blog Talk Radio chat room, like for example, Dream Master. It's a it's a, a nickname nickname saying thank thanks for having you here. They really appreciate your approach, and they mentioned that the Western world is not ready for it yet. Would you agree? Uh, because Brazil is in the Western world as well, so right, right, hmm? and I and I and, and and that's why I think uh, you know Brazil has a very unique role that it's playing in this whole evolution of of medicine and in the evolution of science as well. Uh, and I think Brazil's role has something to do with the fact that that uh, you know Brazil, its geographic location. Uh, and it's uh, it's it's the fact that that it's one of the lowest uh, places on the or the lowest electromagnetic uh, frequencies are in this area of the world, and I think that's probably I think that's what is helping uh, Brazil uh, make contact with the spirit world to transmit all of this information uh, through through Brazil, and it it will eventually. Uh, be channeled throughout the rest of the world, which is something that is very effectively being done through, uh, like, the Medico Espírita Asociación and the uh, Federation of Spiritists. Uh, they've branched out from being national chapters to being international chapters to taking this this knowledge uh, to the rest of the world. And it's it's just a matter of time before the rest of the world will will come on board, I think. And, and we think you're right, Sandra, because if you read the book uh, On the Way to the Light by the Spirit Emmanuel through Chico Xavier, in 1938, Emmanuel already disclosed to us, almost like in a prophetic way, that the United States would become almost like the brain of the of the mm-hmm. planet. And it, it, it came true in so many ways and forms. And talking about Brazil being you know, the core of the heart of the planet. And that's precisely what we're seeing here. And yeah. it's inevitable because people forget the planet is not ours. And it's going to happen, as you said, sooner or later. And that's the tendency fine. is that yeah. it's going to be widespread. So what would you share to the listener as your final comment for today, Sandra? Uh, I would just like to... Uh, to uh, Summarize uh, everything. The, the the most important thing today is that that I think uh, as a bicultural person that I am here in the United States because I'm Mexican American and mm-hmm. I I have an appreciation for more than one culture. Uh, I think it's important for us to look at the quantum leaps of faith and courage Brazil has taken in 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 their you know in their seeking. Uh, the humanization, the evolution of humanity, 
and and uh, alone that science cannot alone do this that it it is it, it must come from an understanding of both classic scientific medicine and and also spiritual understanding and so once the two converge and once which we are starting to see that uh, very slowly in the United States with, uh, for example, uh, Dr. Uh, Chopra and uh, a lot of other uh, other very brilliant minds that are trying to, to, to merge the two. They're trying to converge. And uh, I really am very optimistic that it's just a matter of time before, before we all uh, converge. However, uh, like I said, it, it, it has to start within each one of us, and we all have to be that change that we want to see. So yeah. um, keeping that in mind, I just, uh, uh, like I said, I, I, the, my new book has uh, a lot more information as far as, as uh, the Dr. Fritz phenomena, the, the Dr. Fritz movement, the, this whole uh, healing evolution in Brazil, and uh, again, I was I was most honored uh, to be on your show today and to to share this this uh, this humble information with 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 your audience. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandra. You know, your perspective really brings to us more hope, and we're really looking forward to your new book because we know it's going to bring shed some light in so many ins and outs of this. New approach on healthcare. Thank you so much for being with us today at Cardiac Radio. Thank, thank you, Vanessa. And, and may I add one other? Thing? Sure. I'm so sorry. I, in the event anybody would like any additional information, uh, my website is www.soulharmonics.org. Okay. My email Sandra Nunez two 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 at yahoo dot com. Soulharmonics.com, dot com. Yes. Right. Uh, All dot right. Org. Soulharmonics.org. .org. Okay, we're just yes, sharing this yes. with uh, the ones who are at the chat room of uh, Kardec Radio here. So thank, thank you so you. much, thank Sandra, and, and, and we hope to be in touch. To the book. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. So Have dear listener, we are here with a new hope. You know, we all need uh, uh, the renewal, The we would say the revamp of medicine and it's going to happen sooner or later as Sandra Nunez very wisely said there are leaders in the United States who are you know moving to that direction and whether we like it or not Deepak Chopra is one of them and whether we agree with the whole thing or not they are the ones who are really making the difference in the United States and we will say with its impact around the world, everything else will just unfold. So for now, we would like to give a short break. But when we come back, we have more. And I'll tell you one more is going to happen. A, a piece that is very important today. As the tragedy of Santa Maria, Brazil happened, the death of so many students, more than 230 students, died in the fire of um, of a, 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 a key, the, the kiss uh, disco, they they discarnated in this most tragic way, and spiritism has a beautiful way to console the hearts and the minds of both, both of those who discarnated and those who remained. It's not about judging; it's about consoling and relieving the pain, knowing that as Saint Eugene said. The things of the spirit are the ones that are eternal. The things of matter are passing, and we need to get used to that. After the break, we are going to stream to you a most beautiful message by the Spirit Emmanuel with the beautiful voice over of Greg Stewart, who is finally back on track here with us, which is fascinating. We're most honored by it, followed by the explanation of the idea of collective discarnation under the Spiritist Light by Dr. Magalhães and Dr. Uh, Dr. Marco Magalhães and Dr. Joyce Magalhães, followed by the segment by Kirsten DeMello on the Law of Preservation and the Spirit Book, questions 17 to 24, with the help of 
John DeRosa and Steve Shepard, as well as a new understanding on a passage by the gospel through the segment The Gospel and Spiritism by Luis Sergio Moroda. At the very end, the music by James Moroda, Heavenly, right after the new understanding on how to teach children about joyful families with our dear Bernadette Liao from California. After the break, all of this and much more. We will return to our program. A new masterpiece has just been released by Odyssey of America, Memoirs of a Suicide by Yvonne Pereira. Under the guidance of the spirit Leon Dennis, the spirit author Camilo Castello Branco, using the pen name Camilo Candido Botelho, describes to the medium Yvonne A. Pereira his dreadful experience after discarnated by suicide. The book entails invaluable instruction demonstrating the greatness of the divine mercy toward repentant suicides and providing them with the opportunity to understand the universe and life in its fullest dimension. The beginnings of planet Earth, the evolution of the human being, the immortality of the soul. Christ conscious morality and other relevant themes are presented for the understanding that no attempt at moral growth will work if we remain imprisoned in self-ignorance. A completing of this work shows that there is a road of reconstruction for those who repent. There is always hope because rehabilitation is possible. Buy your copy today at www.edusayofamerica.com. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Now in English, the book Action and Reaction by the Spirit Andrea Louise, psychographed by Chico Xavier. Buy your copy online or via your ebook reader. Go to www.edicefamerica.com today. The International Spiritist Council is organizing and promoting the 7th World Spiritist Congress, which will be held in Havana, Cuba, on March 23rd through the 25th of 2013. The Congress theme will be Charity and Spiritual Education in Building a World of Peace, 150 Years of the Gospel According to Spiritism. For more information, please visit number 7 cem.org And now we return to our program. So dear listener, we have a lot to share with you and for you Karina Menezes, you're just asking us about the website uh for Sandro Nunes and here it is. It's soharmonics.org. And her website on the book, just the book is Brazil Soulful Medicine. You get to know more about it at Amazon.com. Dear listener, you know, we're just talking about how spiritism would relieve our hearts from a new understanding on collective discarnation. This past week, the whole week, all over the world, the eyes were in the little town of Santa Maria in the south of Brazil. Lots of students lost their lives in a tragic fire. And we want to know more why. We want to know more what to do, what to make of this story. Well, this is the Spiritist take on it. And to help us clarify, we have Emmanuel through the hands of Chico Xavier in a most beautiful message entitled Collective Discarnation. And the voiceover is by our dear friend, Greg Stewart. Just after this message... We're going to listen from uh, the segment. Dr. Marga Lyons is going to explain to us more about collective discarnation, a great way to nourish our souls and relieve our hearts. On February 23, 1972, a few dozen people asked the following question to Emmanuel 
through Chico Xavier in Uparaba, Minas Gerais, Brazil. Since God is infinite goodness, why does he allow the distressing death of so many cloistered and helpless people as in the cases of great fires? We really acknowledge God as perfect love allied to perfect justice and as human beings who are children of God grown in love they bring within themselves the imminent justice therefore they become in any situation the most severe judges of their own selves when we return from the earth to the spirit world aware of our own responsibilities we revisit our past debts and we implore for the needed means to rescue them properly. This is how we so often are reborn in groups committed to the collective redemption in the planet. Invaders tied to their own ambition smash collectivities in the voluptuousness of looting. Now they return to the earth with different responsibilities but under a tierced for joint discarnation in public accidents. Community explorers exhausted resources for personal gain. Then they asked to return to the dense body to face the apex of devastating epidemics together. Warmongers managed to assault using cruelty for megalomania of gold and of power. Then, strengthening themselves for regeneration, they pleaded the physical plane to suffer an apparently undeserved shared death in occasions of blood and tears. Buccaneers put fire in vessels and cities in the conquest of easy praise. As we observed ourselves with guilt issues in the beyond, we requested to return to earth to discarnate collectively in painful fires, which would be inexplicable without reincarnation. We create guilt and we ourselves engineer the processes designed to extinguish the consequences. And divine wisdom counts on our efforts and the task of rescue and readjustment in order to induce us to more ample study and progress in regard to our own safety. It is for this reason that human beings leave all earthy calamities with more experience and more light in the brain and the heart in order to defend themselves and appreciate life. Let us grieve without despair those who become victims of disasters that smash our soul. Their pain is our pain. The problems they faced are also ours. However, let us not forget that we are never without the presence of divine mercy before the occurrences of divine justice. Suffering is invariably reduced to a minimum for each of us. Everything is renewed for the good of us all and God grants always the best. This message was from the book Chico Pede Licenza by several spirit authors through the medium Chico Xavier published by G.E.E.M. Chapter 19, A Free Translation. Hello, dear Kardec Radio listener. This is Mark Magalies, and welcome to the segment Spiritism in Your Life. In the past few months, we've seen a lot of tragedies around the world. Innocent people being killed, fires, accidents, natural disasters all those implicating in a lot of suffering and multiple collective discarnations. A lot of us, looking at that scenario, will question, where is justice? Where is God's justice? Many others won't understand and will only see the suffering of people that they are left here, incarnated still. Others will con continuously question, why? Why is this happening? So, in the segment today, we're going to bring the Spiritist view and the understanding of why these processes are actually so important for our spiritual evolution. Not only our spiritual evolution, but from the planet and all the spirits here on Earth. We'll go first to the Spirit's book, question 737. And here's what Alain Kardec asks the spirits. 
What is the aim of God in visiting mankind with destructive calamities? And the Spirit's answer, to make men advance more quickly. Have we not told you that destruction is necessary to the moral regeneration of spirits, who accomplish a new step of their purification in each new existence? In order to appreciate any process correctly, you must see its results. You judge merely from your personal point of view, and you therefore regard those inflictions as calamities, because of the temporary injury they cause you. But such upsettings are often needed in order to make you reach more quickly a better order of things, and to effect, in a few years, what you would otherwise have taken centuries to accomplish. And in the following question, number 738 of the Spirit's book, Allan Kardec asked the spirits, Could not God employ other methods than destructive calamities for effecting the amelioration of mankind? And the spirits answer, Yes, and he employs them every day, for he has given to each of you the means of progressing through the knowledge of good and evil. It is because men profit so little by those other means that it becomes necessary to chastise his pride and to make him feel his weaknesses. But the good man succumbs under the action of these scourges, as does the wicked. Is this just? And the spirits answer, During his earthly sojourn, man measures everything by the standpoint of his bodily life. But, after death, he judges differently and feels that the life of the body, as we have often told you, is a very, very small matter. A century in your world is but the length of a flash in eternity, and therefore the sufferings, the sufferings of what you call days, months, or years are of no importance. Let this be a lesson for your future use. Spirits are the real world, pre-existent to and surviving everything else, they are the children of God, and the object of all His solicitude, and bodies are only the disguises under which they make their appearances in the corporeal world. In the great calamities that decimate the human race, the sufferers are like an army that, in the course of a campaign, see its clothing tattered, worn out, or lost. The general is more anxious about his soldiers than about their coats. And continue on. Question 739. Are destructive calamities useful physically, notwithstanding the temporary evils occasioned by them? Yes, the spirits answer. They sometimes change the state of a country, but the good that results from them is often one that will be felt by future generations. My dear listeners, here we have such a profound and deep understanding what is happening in the world nowadays. As you may know, we're going through a period where certain transitions are, are happening, not only in the planet where we live, but through our existences. Unfortunately, most of us can only see things from our own perspective, with our own material eyes. We cannot see without spiritual eyes. We cannot understand still that the existence and life continues on, independently of this period in time where we see the calamities happening. Justice, real justice, is giving us the free will to make our own decisions and being responsible for its consequences. And remember that most of us decide that we're going to go through a specific trial. Occasionally, these trials involve traumatic discarnations. As the medium Divaldo Franco says in an interview to the Spiritist Review, massive deaths, such as the one at the grocery store in Asuncion, Paraguay, or the nightclub in Buenos Aires, Argentina, keep a close resemblance to the circus fire in Niterói, Brazil. The latter, as explained by the spirit Humberto de Campos through the mediumship of Chico Xavier, was linked to the present reincarnation of ancient Romans responsible for the deaths 
of early Christians at the circus. In your opinion, do these recent disasters have the same cause? Yes, answers Divaldo, however not necessarily in connection to the massacre of Christians. Humanity has shed its share of tears at the hands of religious intolerance, arbitrary politics, corrupt government officials and dishonest businessmen who also played a part in the desecration of the masses. Periodically, the laws of life reunite the offenders of the cosmic consciousness in a traumatic and painful collective death. Violent, mentally unstable and perverted personalities also become indirect instruments of the higher spirits to enforce the inescapable reality of spiritual atonement. Now we're going to listen a passage from the Spiritist Review based on posthumous work by Allan Kardec that explains to us in more detail this message. As we may observe, the subject related to the transition phase in which we now find ourselves has been dealt with for a long time. We really are undergoing a period of transformation on Earth from a world of trials and expiation characterized by the manifestation of selfishness, pride, and violence among humans toward a world of regeneration in which men and women, despite being far from moral perfection, will be more aware of their condition as immortal, perfectible spirits in the process of evolution and, consequently, more involved in their own moral and spiritual advancement. As the spirit of truth highlights, such is the great change which is taking place in our planet. The physical disturbances that occur on Earth will continually to take place as they always have, bringing forth necessary collective trials and submitting humankind to trials and expiation indispensable for the moral progress and spiritual freedom to which we are all destined. When faced with such collective trials, humans feel the need to help their neighbors, individually and collectively, and to assist them with their material, moral and spiritual needs. Such are the manifestations of charity and solidarity that characterize the new world that humankind is building, in which we are experiencing during this current transition phase. And now you're probably asking me, so what should we do when we face situations of like this? So the short answer is, if we can, if we're able to physically help those, we should and we must if we have a chance to. But another thing we can do, all of us can do, and can reach directly the hearts of those who are discriminating and those who are still, is to pray. And in the Gospel according to Spiritism, there's a section that says, Prayers for the dead and for suffering spirits. Suffering spirits beg for prayers. Prayer is useful to them because when they see that they are being remembered, they feel less forsaken and less unhappy. However, prayer has a more direct action on them. It rebuilds their courage and incites them with the desire to uplift themselves to repentance and reparation, and it can divert them from thoughts of evil. In this sense, it may not only alleviate, but shorten their sufferings. Dear friends, let us now finalize our segment today with this understanding that justice, divine justice, always prevails. We may not see it, we may not understand it yet. And what we have to do is to pray, not revolting against it, but pray with our deep sentiments of love, of charity, and of understanding and project all that good energy onto all the people involved, all the spirits involved, the ones that are victim, the ones that are guilty, the ones that are discriminating, and the ones that are staying here. We have to share our good thoughts with them all the time. And we must thank God for everything that happens. Because remember that God is for us all the time. 
although we cannot see it very, very often. Thank you very much, my friends, and God bless us. We will return to our program after these messages. Enjoy this new release. We're born for love. Other renowned Brazilian scientist and researcher on reincarnation, Dr. Anani Andrade. This novel describes one of the most extraordinary and genuine cases of reincarnation ever studied by Dr. Andrade's Brazilian Institute of Psychobiophysics Research in Sao Paulo State. Order your copy now at roundtable.uk at gmail.com or at www.roundtablepublishing-uk.com. Spiritist Network, your gateway to on-demand Spiritist videos, www.spiritistnetwork.com. Spread the word, Kardec Radio, to learn more about Spiritism. Want to find a good way to explain life after physical death to kids or teenagers? Check out the book, Message from a Teen in the Spirit World, by the spirit Nail Lucio and psychograph by Chico Xavier. In this book, a teenager named Carlos explains his impressions on the new life in the spirit realm with his discarnate relatives and new friends. Purchase your copy online at www.ssbaltimore.org. The Spiritist Magazine is a trimestral, digital periodical that publishes the latest news on the Spiritist thought and the movement in the USA and worldwide. Subscribe now at www.spiritistmagazine.com. In the book, A Primer on Being Good by the Spirit May May, psychographed by the medium Shiko Shaviar, explains in simple language appropriate for children two paths in life, the path of good or the path of evil. God has granted us the freedom to choose either one. Purchase your copy online at www.ssbaltimore.org. Now we return to our program. our last segment on the introduction of the Gospel according to Spiritism, we left off at the items Socrates and Plato, the forerunners of the Christian idea and Spiritism. Now, dear listener, we picked up an excerpt in which Allan Kardec highlights some words of Plato, followed by his own words, Kardec's comments. We quote, The soul becomes perturbed and confused when it uses the body in order to consider any object. It becomes dizzy as if intoxicated because it holds on to things which by their very nature are subject to change. Whereas, when man contemplates his very essence, he directs himself to that which is pure, eternal, and immortal, and seeing that his soul is of this nature, he remains joined to this state as long as he can. His perturbations then cease because he is joined to that which is immutable, and this is the state of the soul called wisdom. Well, Kardec points out, and quote, Thus, the man who considers things in a down-to-earth fashion is only deceiving himself. To see things in their true perspective, he must look upon them from high up, that is to say, from the spiritual point of view. Those who are in possession of the true wisdom, then, must isolate the soul from the body in order to be able to see with the eyes of the spirit. This is what spiritism also teaches. Well, my friend, every time Jesus himself had to speak about spiritual truth, as when he spoke to Nicodemus about being born again, people had great difficulty in figuring out what the Messiah meant. And Jesus ended up making questions like, you are a master in Israel and you do not know about these things? 
That's why the Apostle Paul not only once says things like a passage in the first book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Where is the wise? Where is he who has knowledge of the law? Where is the man of this world who has a love of discussion? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For because by the purpose of God the world, with all its wisdom, had not the knowledge of God, it was God's pleasure by so foolish a thing as preaching to give salvation to those who had faith in Him. There you go, my friend. By that time, the philosophy of the Greek and the religious approach of the Jews could not make the perfect table to stand by itself alone. The scientific support would still take longer to come to help to make understand that science, philosophy and religion are just viewpoints of the same truth. So much so that we will repeat some Plato's words now and then compare it to some modern arguments in science Plato said, The soul becomes perturbed and confused when it uses the body in order to consider any object. It becomes dizzy, as if intoxicated because it holds on to things which, by their very nature, are subject to change. Now let's bring it all back to the 21st century and show you an excerpt from an American magazine called Popular Science. The reporter is Michael Moyer, in February of 2004, under the title, Journey to the Tenth Dimension. Listen, quote, If the following seems ridiculous, far-fetched, or just outright outlandish to you, rest assured, it is. It will probably hurt your brain as it has hurt mine. And as it most definitely hurts the brains of those who come up with the stuff for a living. The following asks you to accept ideas that are counter to the fundamental basis of our experience, the framework through which we comprehend everything from setting down a coffee cup to the arc of a home run as it sails into the upper deck. The basic point of that follows, and by the way, what follows is not a fanciful provocation, but has been worked into contemporary consciousness by the brain as physicists alive today, is that everything that you have ever experienced has in some small but significant way been an illusion. Why? Because everything you have ever experienced you have understood as happening in three dimensions of space. Up, down, left, right, and front, back. Yet, this is not how things happen. Things happen in more than three dimensions of space. To see them in only three is to succumb to a trick that the universe is constantly playing on us. Well, they are so similar, my dear listener, aren't they? Those words of Plato and the words of this scientific reporter. With the difference that we are not only showing the opinion of thinkers who base their conclusions on reasoning alone, but on scientific experiments. And to wrap it up today, we go a little further on this report by Michael Moyer and show you how mediumship can anticipate moral and scientific truths. Mr. Moyer goes on to say, quote, Take, for example, the vacuum of deep space. According to modern particle physics, it is not empty at all. It is filled with innumerable subatomic particles constantly popping into and out of the existence, eternally borrowing their short life span from the uncertainty embedded in quantum mechanics. And recent experiments have shown this new and unexpected reality to exist. Modern physics is the most powerful tool for understanding the universe ever conceived. Forgive us, but we would add, Spiritism too. Now, more than 150 years before this report, although the subject has always been controversial, Listen to what Kardec asks the spirits at question number 36, as well as the spirits reply. Kardec asks, Does an absolute void exist in any part of space? The spirits reply, No, there is no void. What appears like a void to you is occupied by matter in a state in which it escapes the action of your senses and of your instruments. 
Well, my friend, so what is this all about? It is that with a more rational approach of the spirituality, with the help of the variables that the spirits bring to us through spiritism, science, philosophy and religion can now set out a journey to a much better world for all of us under the merciful hands of Jesus. Thank you so much. Chapter 2 The General Elements of the Universe The Knowledge of the Origin of Things Question number 17 Can humans know the origin of things? No. On Earth, God does not allow everything to be revealed to them. Question number 18 Will they ever be able to grasp the mystery of things now hidden from them? The veil is lifted as they become more and more purified. But in order to understand certain things, they need faculties they do not yet have. Question number 19. Can't humans grasp some of nature's secrets through scientific investigation? Science has been given to them for their advancement in all matters, but they cannot go beyond the limits set by God. Author's Remarks for Question Number 19 The more humans are allowed to grasp such mysteries, the more they should admire the power and the wisdom of the Creator. However, whether through pride or through weakness, their own minds often render them victims of illusion and they pile theory upon theory. Every day they see how many errors they have mistaken for truths and how many truths they have dismissed as errors. These realizations are further blows to their pride. Question number 20. Outside the realm of scientific investigation, can humans receive communications of a higher order regarding matters that go beyond the scope of their senses? Yes, if God deems it useful, God will reveal what science cannot detect. Remarks for question number 20. It is through such communications that humans can, to a certain degree, know about their past and their future destiny. Spirit and Matter Question 21 Is matter eternal like God, or was it created at some specific time in the past? Only God knows. Nevertheless, there is something you should realize by using your reason. God, the very personification of love and charity, has never been inactive. No matter how long ago you might imagine the onset of the divine action to have been, could you possibly conceive of God as ever having been idle for even one second? Question 22. Matter is generally defined as that which has extension that which can impress our senses, that which is impenetrable. Are these definitions correct? From your own point of view, they are correct because you can only talk about matters that are familiar to you. Matter, however, also exists in states that are unfamiliar. For example, it may be so ethereal and subtle that your senses cannot detect it. It is matter nonetheless, even though you do not perceive it as such. Sub-question number 22. Then how may we define matter? Matter is the tie that enchains spirit. It is the instrument that spirit uses and upon which it simultaneously exerts its action. Author's Remarks for Question 22 
From this viewpoint, one could say that matter is the agent or intermediary that enables spirit to act while at the same time being acted upon by spirit. Question number 23. What is spirit? The intelligent principle of the universe. Sub-question number 23. What is spirit's innermost nature? It is not easy to explain spirit in your language. For you, it is nothing, because it is not something palpable. Nevertheless, for us, it is something. You must realize that nothing means nothing, and nothing does not exist. Question number 24. Is spirit synonymous with intelligence? Intelligence is one of the essential attributes of spirit, but both merge into a common principle. Thus, for you, they are one and the same thing. We will return to our program after these messages. Would you like to liberate yourself from your life struggles or to find inner balance? The Inner Journey CD has three beautiful visualizations that will help you bring harmony to your life. As Joanna D'Angeli tells us to, live in a way that you leave enlightening footprints in your pathway as if they were stars pointing out the pathway to happiness. To find this CD, go to the bookstore on the Spiritist Society of Baltimore webpage www.ssbaltimore.org that is www.ssbaltimore.org and start your inner journey today. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. The International Spiritist Council is organizing and promoting the 7th World Spiritist Congress, which will be held in Havana, Cuba, on March 23rd through the 25th of 2013. The Congress theme will be charity and spiritual education in building a world of peace. 150 years of the gospel according to spiritism. For more information, please visit number 7 And now we return to our program. Welcome, dear Cardiac Radio listeners, to the Spiritist Moment. I am Kirsten DeMell, your host, where we seek to, in these brief moments, through the Spiritist literature, to enlighten ourselves and also to share this wonderful, consoling teachings. We are giving our continuation on the study of Part 3 of the Spirit's book, specifically the Law of Preservation. We are studying Question 707, and allow us to briefly read the actual question and answer for us to discuss a little bit here. Question 707 states the following. The means of subsistence are frequently lacking for certain individuals, even in the midst of the abundance around them. To what is this fact due? And the Spirit's answer. It is primarily due to the selfishness of humans who do not always do what they should. Next, and most often, it is due to humans themselves. Seek and you shall find. These words do not mean that it is enough to simply look to the earth in order to find what you desire. Instead, you must seek with ardor and perseverance, without indifference, and without allowing yourselves to be discouraged by obstacles that are quite often no more than means of putting your tenacity, patience, and firmness to the test. And we end the quote there. So, dear listeners and dear friends, We may ask ourselves the following. Have we ever found ourselves in situations where we are searching for something and at the first sign of any obstacles or troubles, we abandon that particular search? We give it up because it's hard and we don't want to proceed? Well, the spirits tell us that those obstacles are put there for a reason, 
for us to build that moral strength, to really build up our patience, our firmness, and our perseverance. Because what are we without building up our muscles? If God were to hand us everything so easily, we would never build up that moral strength. What this question asks is, why is it that there are certain people, even living amongst, amongst abundance, can't even live at a basic level, which is the term subsistence? And the spirits tell us it's because it's the selfishness of humans, and perhaps maybe we aren't sharing with one another, but also by humans themselves. Not enough effort that we're putting forth. We want to seek after something. We make a first step, but then we give up. So let us be more courageous in the things that we go after. But remembering the wise words of the spirits when they tell us not to create imaginary needs and necessities. In reality, we don't really need. Because oftentimes, or sometimes, as spirits tell us, we create these things, as they told us in question 705 in the answer. But instead, we should seek out the divine and very wise counsel of the spirits in the observation of question 707 the spirits tell us and we quote if men and women are sensible enough to seek contentment in real and serious things rather than in the utopias that cause them to go backward instead of advancing end quote so let us be happy with living simply with the simple and real and serious things in life And dear friends, if you're asking, well, I'm not really sure what is real or what is serious, let us seek refuge in prayer, perhaps in our spiritist centers, some spiritual therapy. But remember, dear friends, we are never without the help of our divine creator or we are never without the help of our spirit guide, guardian angel, whichever term we choose to give to it. We know that we are never alone and that we are always under the guidance of our great creator let us contemplate these words throughout the rest of this week and always seek to persevere and let us not get discouraged and as always we wish you many blessings welcome to our yes Youth Education is for Sesame with Kardec Radio. I am Bernadette Liao, and I'll be spending a few minutes with you, inspiring to bring spiritual awareness and spiritist teachings to our youth, parents, and educators. Today is our last segment, Talking About Joy, and we will answer the following question. How can I have a joyful family? Family is a blessing. It is in our family that we begin, as incarnated spirits, our voyage toward our moral and spiritual progress. And this is where we will find challenges and joyful moments that will transform our lives. Having a joyful family sounds wonderful, but as we interact with our family members, we realize that this may not be that easy. One main reason is because we have no control over other people. And even though we may try, we cannot be responsible for making people happy. We can lead to suggest ways to help others to be more joyful, but it is up to them to take the first step. It surely would be nice to be surrounded by a joyful family. But instead of focusing on how joyful we would like our family to be, let's look into ourselves first. How would you describe your relationship with the members of your family? Ask yourself, am I joyful when I'm around them? Am I tolerant and patient? Do I hold grudges? Or have arguments with my parents, siblings, children, or spouse? Do I have high expectations on how I would like them to act? If we want a joyful family, we need to plant the seed, and it should start with us. The question is, how much are we willing to do the work? 
It is interesting and also sad to see how people can be very polite and respectful to strangers, but not toward their own family. They raise their voices and are aggressive with their children, but in a split of a second, they can change and using a calming voice to talk to someone they just met. There are couples that live in an abusive relationship, yelling at each other, using offensive words, but can easily show a happy face to the neighbor that just knocked on the door. This type of behavior becomes acting a facade. It is a person who is nice and wonderful in the society, but a tyrant at home. Dear friends, Loving kindness is start at home. It is among our family members that we refine our spirit, practice tolerance, and learn to love one another. Question 774 of the Spirit's book explains that social interaction is necessary to evolution, and family ties are the basis for life in society. This is why social interaction is a natural law. God wants humans, by living together in society, to learn to love each other. When we truly develop the awareness of how blessed we are with the opportunities we are facing in our families, then joy becomes a natural feeling. Of course, there will be challenges, but the Spirit's philosophy brings us hope and acceptance by helping us to understand the possible reasons why we are born in a certain family and the relationship with our loved ones. It could be for reparation reasons, to make it up for some mistakes we made from previous life and now we are back together to learn and make amendments. It could be for a sacrifice prison. A spirit that is more evolved is together with one less evolved to help him to progress. This relationship involves challenges and sacrifice. It could also be as a trial. A spirits that in past life hated or harmed each other and now they are back together to overcome their issues and progress. It could be for affinity. Evolved spirits who truly love and care about each other and that they are together with the goal to grow spiritually. Or for casual reasons. Spirits that meet for the first time and that depending on the success or not of their relationship in their actual life may come back together in their next lifetime. A joyful family requires a joyful environment. We are responsible for the atmosphere we create at home. If we want a joyful family, we should have joyful, loving, and positive thoughts at home and act accordingly to reflect that energy. That is why it is so important to pray at home. Be careful on what we say and how we say, and be selective on what we see on TV or on the Internet. Another common problem that affects the home environment is work-related. Some of us may have the habit of bringing our problems from work to our home. We come home worried, stressed, in a bad mood taking out our frustrations on our loved ones, or even kicking and yelling at the dog who is truly joyful to see us. There is a story of a man that every time he came home from work, he stopped by a small tree in his front yard, pulled out a little rock he had in his pocket, and left it by the tree. In the mornings, as he was leaving to work, he walked by the tree, picked a little rock up, and put it back in his pocket. He 
He repeated that action every day he went and returned from work. His neighbor, intrigued by his behavior, and who observed him doing that regularly, asked the man about the little rock and why he did that. The man explained to his neighbor that the little rock represented all his problems and worries about work, and that he made sure that he didn't bring them home every day by leaving them by the tree, the little rock, and just picking them up in the morning on his way to work. This story illustrates how important it is for us not to overload our family with our work issues. Some of us do not bring just a little rock home, but actually some boulders affecting the environment and relationship with our spouses and children. A joyful family also spends time together, do things together. It is so sad nowadays to see members of a family living in the same household and who became strangers. They do not make any effort to bond or connect. Instead, they isolate themselves in their bedrooms and spending more time on social media and on internet than interacting with their family. Kardec Radio listeners, we may not have a perfect and joyful family all the time, but we can definitely have joyful family moments. Family is a wonderful gift that God gave us for our evolution, and it is through our everyday relationship with our parents, spouses, children, and relatives that we will be called to be understanding patient, show affection, compassion, love, friendship, joy, and practice humbling serving each other. As Pope John Paul II said, to maintain a joyful family requires much from both the parents and the children. Each member of the family has to become in a special way the servant of the others. Thanks for listening to Yes, and if you have any questions that would like us to answer here in this segment, please email them to Kardec at kardecradio.com. Dear listener, the show today was totally about a new method of healing, and a healing that goes deeply into the soul. Actually, this month, of February at Kardec Radio, we have also amazing programs that will help us go into that direction. Next week, we are going to have the amazing and worldwide um, Tara Breck here with us. She has just released a new book, True Refugee, Finding Peace and Freedom in Your Own Awakened Heart. And she had a previous best-selling book, Radical Acceptance. She is a clinical psychologist and Western teacher of Buddhist meditation in Washington, D.C. area. And though we are bringing this um, Buddhist approach, I will tell you it's most universal. Something that Christ taught us all the way about this inner peace in our awakened heart. As much as her previous book, Radical Acceptance, it really brought us a new understanding on how to conquer that acceptance at difficult times. On the following weekend, we're going to have uh, here with us our dear George Cow, who was previously interviewed uh, on Spiritism in America show. And he's going to teach us about energy management and habit creation, something that we talk very often in Spiritism, but we need more extensive details on how to achieve it. And at the end of the month, also a most interesting interview with Dr. Chris Carter, who is going to be talking about his recent book, Science and the Afterlife Experience. There's so much to share with you at Kardec Radio that we don't have enough time during the day and the week to prepare it all. But 
we are very thankful to everyone who has been cooperating with us, either through donations at cardiacradio.com or uh, by sending suggestions and also volunteering for great voiceovers and segments. If you are willing to help us, just write to us at cardiacradio at gmail.com or at the contact form at cardiacradio.com. Now, before the final prayer, the prayer of Caritas, we're going to stream here the beautiful song uh, composed by James Moroda from Brazil. The title of the, the song is Heavenly. Let us enjoy this as we prepare ourselves to this moment that we we'll pray together. Are you ready, dear listener? Right now is a, that moment of Cardiac Radio live show when we pray together. You may be asking, why do we pray? You know, prayer is communication with God. It's not the only way, but it is one of the ways in which we communicate. In other ways, by doing good deeds. But we pray because no matter how right or wrong we are in our lives, we need to communicate with God all the more. Some people say, I don't pray because I feel so wrong, that I'm ashamed. I don't have the courage even to talk to God. Well, that's the time we need to talk to God all the more, when we feel ashamed and when we are feeling that we made a mistake. So whether we are joyful and being grateful, 
This is one of the ways and the reasons why we pray. Or also, the the day we need to ask for strength to keep on walking and to keep on marching towards the goal, the greater goal of life, which is inner growth. Or also when we are so mesmerized by God's providence that we would like to praise God by praying as well. The prayer of Caritas is an amazing prayer that was compiled by the very spirit Caritas, who was a martyr in, uh, in ancient Rome. She compiled this beautiful prayer that summarizes everything sometimes we want to say in a prayer. And if you want a copy of this prayer, you can go to the Spiritist magazine. Uh, in one of the previous issues, we have published the the whole uh, writing of the prayer. Or in Sandra Nunez's book, Brazil Soulful Medicine, in uh, one of the chapters, The Prayer of Caritas. It's on page 143. It's right there. So let us raise our thoughts and... Visualize stars of radiating light reaching everyone on planet Earth, bringing healing, bringing peace, bringing new hope. God, our Father who is all power and goodness. Please give strength to those who are experiencing pain and anguish. Give light to those who seek the truth and fill the human heart with love and compassion. God, please give the traveler the star that guides solace to those in pain and rest to the sick and weary. O Father, give the guilty repentance, the spirit truth. Give the child guidance, the orphan a parent. Lord, let your goodness encompass everything that you have created. Mercy, dear God, to those who do not know you. Hope to those who are in pain. Let your will allow the consoling spirits to spread peace, hope, and faith everywhere. God, may a single ray of light, a spark of your divine love, blaze the earth. Let us drink from the fountain of that infinite and fruitful goodness, and all tears will be dried and all pain lessened. A single heart, a single thought will rise to you like a cry of gratitude and love. Like Moses on the mountain, we await you with open arms. O Almighty, all greatness, all, all powerful, all, all beauty, all perfection. We wish in some way to receive your mercy. Dear God, give us the power to help everyone progress, that we may rise up to you. Give us pure charity, give us faith and reason, give us simplicity that will make our souls the mirror into which your divine image may be reflected. And so be it. Dear listener, we hope the program today has brought new hope and nourishment for you. And we hope you share the good news that Kardec Radio is here at different forms, on demand 24-7. You can Connect to it at iTunes U, Kardec Radio Channel, at kardecradio.com. You can also log on to blogtalkradio.com slash kardecradio and listen to previous shows from the very first day when it was founded 
on July 4th, 2011. Each and every show is available for you to help you and to help all of the humanity on the earth to get to know more about themselves, empower their lives, and live a much better life. Next week, we're going to be here with Tara Brack, when she's going to share with us amazing insights from her recent book, True Refugee, Finding Peace in Our Awakened Heart, and also her previous best-selling book, Radical Acceptance. For now, we wish you lots of blessings during this week. Thank you for listening to Kardec Radio, broadcasting live every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Email us and share your comments at www.kardecradio.com. Until next time, we wish you many blessings.